Free Rodney. Rodney Lincoln, the man who has languished in a cold cell for the vicious murder of a St. Louis woman and the attempted murder of her two children. Was he wrongfully convicted? Crime Watch Daily is following stunning new developments as Lincoln is back in a Missouri courtroom for two days of evidentiary hearings. We're hoping that the state of Missouri recognizes that he is innocent. Justice is important and this family suffered in that. As a child, Melissa DeBoer's testimony helped convict Rodney Lincoln. It now may help to exonerate him. You ready for what's going to happen? Yes, ma'am. Over 30 years ago, Joanne Tate and her two daughters, then seven-year-old Melissa and four-year-old Renee, awoke to a nightmare. A man Melissa recognized entered their St. Louis home and stabbed them multiple times. I opened my eyes and I could see him. He was sitting at the end of my mom's bed, smoking cigarettes and watching TV. And he was just he was just so calm. He was waiting for us to die, all of us. And I was just like, this is so unfair. My mom, she didn't deserve this. What did we do, you know? Joanne Tate was dead. Both girls survived. A month later, cops arrested Rodney Lincoln, one of Joanne Tate's former boyfriends. Even though he had two alibis the night of the murder, Lincoln was put in a lineup with three others. Did you know for certain that that was the man that harmed you? Oh my you? God, yes. It was visceral. There were two trials and two key pieces of evidence used against him. A lone hair found on a blue blanket and Melissa's testimony. Ultimately, Rodney Lincoln was found guilty and sentenced to two life terms plus 15 years. My dad absolutely did not kill Joanne Tate. He did not attack those children. He's innocent. Some believe confessed serial killer Tommy Lynn Sells, who was from the area, could have been the murderer. I stabbed her here, and then she like jumped back, and then, then I... <sighs> Some say the crime matched his M.O. and he was in the area at the time of the murder, but Sells never admitted to killing Tate. Two years ago, he was executed in Texas for another murder. For Rodney, it looked hopeless. Then, a new development. The lone hair said to be a match at trial after further testing turned out to not match Rodney Lincoln. All that was left? was Melissa's testimony and Lincoln's adamant denials. Did you kill Joanne Tate? No, I did not. Did you ever at any point harm Melissa or Renee? No, never in my life could I or would I harm a child. No way. When we first interviewed Melissa, she felt justice had been served. There is no way it could be anybody but Rodney. No way, none. I know, he knows, God knows. But after Melissa watched our Crime Watch Daily investigation, she had an epiphany. She sat down with us soon after. Rodney did not kill my mom. He did not try to kill Renee and I. Tommy Lynn Sells was at my house that night, not Rodney. Melissa now thinks somewhere along the way, she was told what to believe. I allowed my brain to be manipulated. That was then, and now? No matter what it cost me, I'm dedicated to getting him out of there. Rodney does not deserve to be there. And it's Melissa's recantation on Crime Watch Daily that has brought everyone to the Cole County Courthouse for these two days of hearings. I talked to Dad last night on the phone. One thing he did say before he got off the phone was, instead of you coming to see me this time, I'm gonna come see you. I'll meet you in the courtroom. As he entered the court, Rodney wearing a suit for the first time in years was overwhelmed seeing all the support. Even a former corrections officer was there. He sat there in that chair and he looked out and he must have mouthed the word wow about five times, you know, trying to soak it all in that there's that many people in here in this room just for me. I gotta give a lot of the credit to, that, to you guys for 
preparing the story originally. Cameras were allowed in the courtroom until it came time for people to take the stand. A very emotional Melissa was the star witness. The mood was intense. There was a lot of anxiety. It was almost palpable. You could reach out in the air and touch it. Once again, Melissa recounted what her mother endured. Talking about how my mother died trying to protect her children, that grabs me, that she did it for us. She sacrificed herself for us. And on the stand, she said as firmly as she said on Crime Watch Daily that Rodney Lincoln was not the one who hurt her family. When it concluded, Melissa was crying so hard, she was unable to leave the stand for several minutes. It takes a lot to do what she's doing, and she didn't have to do it. She chose to do what was right. She really spoke the truth, and it came out of her heart. We're here today to, to, for, to support Melissa, and then we're here to, uh, to support Rodney Lincoln. Other dramatic testimony came from Rodney's daughter, Kay, and Melissa's uncle, Nathaniel, and cousin, Jackie. We know that Rodney's innocent, so the rest of our closure would be let the guy go, give him back to his family. During the two days, the state called no witnesses, not even Rodney. Day two is wrapped, and now all the evidence is in the judge's hands. This is what I wanted to happen. I wanted him to have his day in court, to have it submitted to a judge, and now let the judge make the decision. For now, Rodney Lincoln returns to his cell, not quite knowing if freedom is imminent. What's next for you? Well, we wait. <laughs> We're getting pretty good at waiting. All right, Lonnie, let's talk about that waiting game. I mean, you spent many, many years prosecuting murder cases. Mm -hmm. The judge has this in his hands now. He can take as long as he likes to make the decision. But, I mean, Rodney Lincoln has spent more than 30 years behind bars. Right. It seems to be moving pretty slowly. Well, it's not that simple, Matt. There's a process that has to be followed. Once the victim comes forward and recants, the prosecution then has to go and interview that witness again, look at all the other evidence, and decide if they want to present to the judge that there's still enough evidence to keep the case the way it is or to step back and say you know we made a mistake what do you think looking at the evidence is likely to happen here this is pure speculation but looking at the way the prosecution handled the hearing with the defense and the judge they essentially stepped back and didn't really put on a strong prosecution case it looks like they might just let the judge go ahead and exonerate the defendant well there's certainly many people holding their breath awaiting that decision and we will of course have the very latest as news breaks right here on the show and 24 7 at crimewatchdaily.com